So a few weeks ago, I was on a Facebook forum and somebody had posted a screenshot of something that they had asked AI, ChatGPT, to create for them, a soap recipe. And I started thinking, with everything that we have going on with ChatGPT, with AI, like making whole ass like accounts and websites and full, there's a full fragrance company out there, 100% AI, the copy, the pictures, all of it. I started thinking, is this a good idea? Is this something that we should be using in our soap and cosmetic formulations? And so I'm going to talk about that today, and I will tell you more about the formulation that I got from ChatGPT in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sedzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And as I said, you are here for a weird experiment, kind of. I'm actually doing a twofer with all of this because this is also the launch of the new Project Soapway challenge. And that challenge is using fresh fruits and or vegetables within a formulation for cosmetics, specifically designed for the face. But I thought it would be a good idea to also include ChatGPT in the fun. And so I went ahead and pulled up my ChatGPT and asked it to create me a cosmetic recipe. And that recipe was awful. And so then I changed the wording and said, okay, how about a cosmetic formulation? And it was still awful. And I went back and forth with ChatGPT wanting to tell it how stupid it actually was many, many times before I finally went ahead and bit the bullet and made my own formulation because I am a professional that knows what I'm doing and ChatGPT, I guess, is not. So let's go see the recipe that AI created for me as well as the recipe that I ultimately settled on for my Project Soapway submission, which is a carrot-infused eye serum. And let's go do all of that while I make it and I show you the thing that I did with the AI that's probably going to now like make everything in my house turn off because I am saying that it's bad, actually. So today I thought we would make our carrot eye infusion, our eye serum infusion, carrot infusion rather, and I thought it'd be fun to ask ChatGPT. And first up, what is this? Why are things in cups and tablespoons and drops and shit? What is this? What is this nonsense? This is absolute garbage. Also, no preservative in any of this. You're, you're just out here. There's no preservative. There's no emulsifier. There's nothing in this. And so then I told ChatGPT, there's no preservative. And it's like, sure, but here's another recipe that has like cups and whatever. And ultimately, I ended up talking to ChatGPT about this, uh, four or five different prompts. And I'm like, no, 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 fix this, fix this, fix this. And it still continued to give me problems, i.e. no emulsifier. If you're going to be putting a water infusion, it was all a moment and a bad one at that. So we're not doing that. We are doing a serum for the eyes, uh, specifically to reduce puffiness and all the jazz. And uh, we are going to be using all of our infusions. And I'm gonna go ahead and make the infusion, or the formulation rather, on my own, because I am a professional and ChatGPT is not. So that was just my fun little time with all of that because that was brought up on a Facebook page as a question recently, like have you had chat GPT formulate your soap recipes. And I'm like, that's strange. Don't do that. But also I want to do it, you know, cause I have chat GPT and it does crazy crap like that. So I would not recommend it at all, at all, at all. Uh, the thing that I would recommend when you're going to be working with anything, uh, as far as cosmetics or soaps go is using your own brain, your own recipes, uh, actual like recipe books, you know, good formulations or formulators that you trust and moving off of that. So a, a serum we are going to be making today is going to function a lot like 
a lotion formulation. And so you're going to have different phases when you're going to put all of your things in. And so your first phase is going to be essentially your water phase and you're going to have all of your water heated up and ready to go and all of your oils and your uh, waxes and your solids like your acetyl alcohols, your fatty alcohols, etc. melted down to then emulsify into the water. And then you're going to have a second phase, which is going to be at a cooler temperature, around 120 degrees, when you're going to add your at your actives. So your extracts, your essential oils, your preservative, all of the jazz. And so this is what we are working with today. We have a carrot hydrosol, freshly made. And we have jojoba oil, hemp seed oil, carrot glycerite, also freshly made, acetyl alcohol, cucumber extract, chamomile essential oil, lavender essential oil, geranium essential oil, and Optifin Plus as the preservative. And so with all of this, I'm going to just play around with these formulations here, 88, 96, 102% essentially is what I have in all of that. And so that formulation's not exactly accurate as far as my percentages went. So what I would do to change that would be to eliminate or take down the water to 78% and leave the rest of it as is. Now, this is my carrot hydrosol that I am going to siphon off. And I just, hello, get the top off. You could just take the top off. I don't know why you're always so confused. You could, uh, you don't need to, you take the top off. If you take the top off of the, nope, that's not how the, the separatory funnels work. You could, do you see that the top is still on? I love that I'm just leaving all of this in. Look, sometimes... We're bad at things, okay? Like me, I'm bad at things, right? Oh, that's when I was like, oh, right, the top is, the top is still on. Mm -hmm. I'm a disaster. Anyway, carrot hydrosol. That's what I did with all of this. I showed you all of the flasks and the burners and everything doing its thing uh, in a video previously. We were talking about all things carrot, and I am using the water that came from the seeds effectively when we were doing the carrot seed oil distillation. And so I will be using that as my main base within this serum. Now that carrot hydrosol is going to be really great because it's rich in vitamins A, C, and E, which are obviously great for skin health. It has really good antioxidant properties, which will help protect the skin from free radicals. Very hydrating, obviously, because it's water. And it's anti-inflammatory. And so it will soothe and calm the skin. In addition to that, the uh, jojoba oil will be used and that's really nice because a uh, jojoba oil mimics the skin sebum which will provide a really good hyd hydration without clogging the pores and it's also anti-inflammatory so we got another one with that for reducing redness and swelling it's very antioxidant rich vitamins e and b which will help repair and can control damage and it's also anti-aging jojoba oil so it'll reduce the appearance of fine lines wrinkles all the jazz and then hemp seed oil is going to be mo more of the same, essentially, except for the sebum thing. So rich in the EFAs, so omega-3s and 6s, also anti-inflammatory, very, very moisturizing, and antioxidant-rich, protecting the skin from environmental damage. The uh, carrot glycerite, also freshly made, is uh, very, very hydrating because it's glycerin. It's a humectant, all the jazz, and it's going to be uh, provide all of the awesome extra or, you know, delicious things that come out of the carrot into the glycerin, just like you would expect the water. So it's also going to be a little bit brightening because of the sugars, the sugar alcohols that are in glycerin. The acetyl alcohol is gonna be really good because it's going to be very emollient on the skin. So it will soften and smooth the skin without clogging the pores in this particular percentage. Obviously the reason why I'm using the acetyl alcohol at all though is because it's going to act as my emulsifier. It is going to not only thicken the serum, but it is going to stabilize the emulsion and ensure that we have a long shelf life. Now the cucumber extract is going to be very soothing. Cucumbers are great for puffiness and irritated skin. Also very hydrating and it's very high in vitamin C and K, which are antioxidant rich and it is anti-inflammatory. Chamomile extract or essential oil, it's obviously, it's anti-inflammatory. It is an antioxidant, it's very calming. So is lavender. And then geranium is going to be really good because it is an astringent as well as being anti-inflammatory and antibacterial. It is an astringent that will tighten the skin and reduce the appearance of wrinkles, and it is balancing, so it helps promote a healthy acid mantle. And then obviously the Optifin is going to be used because it is a broad-spectrum preservative 
that is not so, not irritating on most skin types, even sensitive skin. And so that's what we are going to be working with today for this formulation, why I chose all the things that I did. And this is me weighing everything out in freaking grams, you guys, because it's just a little teeny tiny batch, but weigh them out. If you ever see a formulation that says use a half a cup of this and a quarter cup of that and a tablespoon of that, unless you're dealing with bath bombs where it really doesn't matter, run away. For cosmetic formulations, that is not what you should ever, ever do. Also, again, I cannot stress this enough. Do not have ChatGPT make your cosmetic formulations. And on to the make, and as I am stirring up the jojoba, hemp, cetyl alcohol, all the jazz in this, I'm going to also incorporate my waters, and I am then going to just go ahead and give it a, a whisk with my, just a hand whisk here. You can take out your stir stick if you want to, you just get a faster emulsion. Not really necessary for something like this, and it's certainly not in this small of an amount. You can definitely hand whisk this to its emulsion and it will be just fine. Now this is being done for the Project Soapway Challenge wherein it was uh, fresh, well, fresh fruits or vegetables incorporated in, I think I just said two ways. I'm not really sure. I did it a whole, I think I just did it two ways actually now that I say it. So it better just be two ways. Otherwise I just failed my own challenge, right? Because I did carrot glycerite and the carrot hydrosol for this because I wanted to incorporate fresh fruits and veg into these formulations. That was the point of the Project Soapway Challenge for everybody. And as we all know, incorporating fresh fruits and vegetables into a cosmetic is a formulator's nightmare. It's not a good time. It's not a good time. So everybody had to be really, really thoughtful with how they did it. Ultimately, I incorporated fresh by creating hydrosols and extracts because I wasn't going to put a carrot puree in it because I'm scared, you know? Other ways to do this would have been, I suppose, using a carrot powder, which would have been fine. Um, obviously, the carrot infused, the carrot oils, the infusions, that would work too. I did not use that because I didn't have any more of my carrot oils left. But this particular formulation was designed with the intention of using it for an eye serum and so to reduce puffiness and swelling. And so that's really what I was leaning into with all of the ingredients that I selected. I want this eye serum to be really nice and hydrating that's going to penetrate nicely and quickly because my serums go on underneath my moisturizers. And so this would be part of the layering that I would do either during the day or at night or both. I love just layering lots and lots of cosmetics onto my skin just generally. So usually it's both. This particular formulation ended up creating, I believe, four ounces when it was all said and done. That is a two-ounce container, um, pretty sure. Yes, and I think I ended up with two of them when it was all said and done. So that'll last you a crap ton long time. So this actual recipe is good for if you wanted to make, you know, just little things like proper serum sizes for to sell. You could do that with this exact formulation. And it would work out really well. You'd have multiples of them because those are all like 15 mils. You know what I mean? The actual products that you sell, you get it. Okay, and on to the test. And this is set up overnight. Now, this particular formulation has been tested for, uh, it's been tested for pH. It's been tested for bacteria, all the jazz. All the appropriate tests have been run on it. And I just wanted to leave it open overnight to see kind of what it does. Does it develop a, a film? Is it gross? Does it have like the scum type stuff on it? And it wasn't too terribly bad. The actual texture of it all, very, very delightful. I like this a lot. It suggests that it's going to be a nice lightweight serum that's going to penetrate really nicely and not be overly, I, I want to I love a nice tacky serum, especially if I'm going to be using it during the day and I'm going to be applying my makeup, but I don't want it to be uh, so thick that it will start pilling. And so this is what I'm always looking for when I put a serum on is, is it going to provide a nice barrier, nice protection, be nice and well, it's going to, you know, absorb really nicely. But if I'm just moving, you know, just friction of my hands and everything, is it going to pill? And I'm not seeing any of that. So that is a good thing. It means it's a nice formulation. I did that because I'm a professional and ChatGPT is not. I guess that's overall the focus of this particular 
video. I mean, I know it's Project Soapway and everything, but I'm kind of mad that ChatGPT did that. And so it does scare me that ChatGPT is out in these streets and people are wondering if they should be using it for their formulations. So that's probably what I'm going to end up titling all of this. And that's going to be the thumbnail. ChatGPT is awful, actually, but this is not. So you should try this formulation. All right, that's it. That's my Project Soapway. Back to my face. So first off, just taking it full circle, as far as the AI goes, I definitely think you should not be using it for your cosmetics, for your soaps, for any formulations whatsoever. A, this is stuff that you're going to need to know anyway. Do not rely on ChatGPT for your knowledge base. You need to know why formulations look the way that they do. You need to understand how different fatty acids play a part within your soap making recipes, all the things. But second and probably more importantly, there are hundreds of thousands of recipes out there. If you're wanting a soap recipe, a cosmetic, a serum, a lotion, a bath bomb, whatever, there are people out there like me that will just give them up. There are others that will ask you to pay for them. There are others still that, you know, put them all into one handy dandy little thing, called it a book, and they sell it. Or you can check it out from the library. It's wild. So many options, for sure. So I would definitely not be using AI. Now, it could be a good thing to get a jumping off point for recipes, but even then, when I tested it with that and just said, hey, give me an idea for like coconut oil substitutions within a soap recipe, it was weird. It was, how about some olive oil? How about some hemp seed oil? And it's like, how about that makes zero sense in soap? You know what I mean? It was just kind of throwing information at me. And so I don't think that it's really where it should be for us to be relying on it too terribly much. The rest of it, my serum was awesome. It was fabulous. I love it. I've been using it for a couple weeks. I use it at night. I use it during the day and it is delightful. I love the infusions with the carrots, with both the hydrosols and the glycerin, the glycerites that I created on my own. So I'm going to count that as fresh. I could have incorporated something of the actual root, but I got a little bit nervous. I didn't have time to really run a full preservative test on it and make sure everything was fine. So I didn't do that. But that is my submission for Project Soapway. If you guys are interested in making the recipe, you should do so and like tell me about it in the comments. That would be excellent. You guys should definitely stick around for the rest of the week. We have the three Project Soapway winners that are also incorporating fresh fruit and or vegetables into their cosmetics, telling us all about their recipe, doing the damn thing. It's going to be amazing. You want to stick around for it. I already said that, but like, subscribe, comment, share, th those things, you know. For the Sudzers who do all those things, hey, hello, hi, Sudzers, how are you? You are amazing. I hope you guys have been having an excellent week. This has been quite the summer for us thus far. This is the first quasi-cool day, and I have been hot early. It's unseasonably warm. That's kind of it for me. Busy, but really hot. I am going to go. I hope you guys, again, have a good rest of the day, and I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Project Soapway Cosmetic Edition Soapy Fun. Bye.